Good morning, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. This is the prayer, praise, and worship experience of the Parenthood Ministries. I'm here with my Valentine, the Reverend Gloria Wright Cox. I'm Bishop Richard Cox. We're glad that you joined us today, for we're ready to praise God and give him glory and adoration. Come join us in this worship service. This is the prayer, praise, and worship experience of the Parenthood Ministries. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Good morning. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God's banner over you this morning is love. God loves each and every one of you, and we're glad that you join us today as we give God glory and give him honor and praise for a new day we have never saw before. Good morning, everybody. God bless you. We have Lori Brown, there's Julie Ziegler, and Winnie Johnson. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. It's so easy to love you. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. It's so easy to love you. It's so easy to love you. You're my friend. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. So easy to love you. to love. 
love you It's so easy to love you You're my friend Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Anthony Graham. God is a friend that sticketh closer than any brother. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Good morning, everybody. We get ready to go to the prayer list and go to the throne of grace this morning. God is a prayer hearing and prayer answering God. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. And so it's a privilege to go before his throne. The prayer list by our pastor, Reverend Gloria Wright Cox. Well, we want to continue to pray for Julie Ziegler. Julie, and praying for her health, her family, and praying for healing. Uh, we're continuing to pray for Georgia Alexander, Sylvia Mosley, who are chaplains. Um, we want to pray for Evangelist Angela Brinkley and um, myself, Tanya Stockton, and Katrina uh, Walker in the God Loves All Women Facebook group. Uh, we want to pray especially for Tanya Stockton. There was uh, uh, She lost someone close to her this week. I believe it was her spiritual father. But we want to keep her lifted up in prayer. We want to um, pray for um, all of the all of the pastors and their wives this morning. We want to pray for Pastor Rev Pastor and Reverend Staples who are in Columbus, uh, Reverend Shelby and Dr. Crystal Walker. We want to pray for Elmer Martin and his wife, uh, Reverend L. W. Floyd and Sister Mickey who are in Florida. We want to pray for who else is Chad on this? And Ellie Chad White. and Ellie White. We want to pray Darryl for Daryl and Mrs. Ward, Derek Karen and Daryl Young, Lloyd and Mrs. Hill, um, Father Ben and Stacy, Father uh, Ben Spearhardy. and Stacy Spearhardy, Renard Allen and his wife, Reverend Dudley and his family and his wife, Doctor Mrs. P. E. Henderson. We want to pray for them. I think that's all. Don Carter, Don and Dr. Carter, Rockney Carter, and Dr. Rockney Carter. We want to pray for all of those that we have called. No, my other son in ministry, Reverend Kendall Wright and Mrs. Wright in Westchester. Amen. We want to pray for uh, Crystal, Stacy, and Katrina Wright. We're praying for survivors and caregivers united. Um, cancer survivors group. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Deborah Ogletree and her mother, Mother McClure, and praying for Pastor, a senior pastor, Pastor Betty Banner. We want to pray for her. We want to lift up uh, Shabbat Ministries with uh, Carla Johnson. And um, so we want to lift up all of those that we have called today. We want we had a praise report last week of Rochelle Wooten is getting better. And she was on the broadcast last week. So we want to praise the Lord for God touching uh, her body and healing her. And still continue prayer for Constance Causey. We want to continue to pray for... Um, Anthony Graham and family. We want to pray for Winnie Johnson and family. And Constance, I think I said Constance mm -hmm. Causey. So we want to pray for all of those this morning. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we're so grateful to be able to come to your throne once again. And thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. God, in these difficult times in which we are now living, you've been with us every step of the way, and you've never left us alone. When we were sick, you healed us. When we were lonely, you were our company keeper. When we were in sorrow, you comforted us. And so we praise you, God. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our risen thank Savior you. and soon-coming King. 
who died on Calvary, whose body was broken, whose blood was shed for the remission of our sins. Forgive us, God, for our sins and our negligence and our unconcern. Forgive us for our faults. Forgive us when we stumbled and failed, but you picked us up, brushed us off, and allowed our golden moments to roll on a little while longer. God, we're praying for grieving families this morning, praying for broken hearts, broken families, separated families, people who are hurting, people who do not know which way to go and which way to turn. So we ask, O oh God, that they look towards the hills from which cometh their help. For the help and strength comes from the Lord. God, we thank you that on this Valentine's Day, we can love on you. For you are the lover of our soul. We thank you, God, that life is as well with us as it is. And, oh, God, that you've turned our sanctuaries into our own houses in which we reside. We thank you, God, for showing up. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for your care. And, God, today we thank you to be able to worship you in yes, spirit yes, and in yes. truth. You're worthy to be praised, God. You watched over us all night last night and woke us up early this morning with a finger of love. And for this, we are grateful. God, we need to hear a word from the Lord today. We ask you to bless my wife as she preaches the word today. Bring somebody into remembrance of the good things that you've done for them let them know, God, that somebody out there needs a witness. Somebody out there needs to know that you are the joy of our salvation. Yes, you are. God, we thank you for our families and our thank friends you, and for our thank church you, members. And God, we know soon as this virus is conquered by you, we thank you for the vaccines being distributed across this country. We pray, God, that the deaths would continue to go down and the hospitalizations would be few. And God, we're anxious to get back into your sanctuary. Anxious to get back, oh God, into the church of God. To be a witness for you, not just in the building, but continuously in our lives and everywhere we go. On our jobs, at school, amongst our friends and co-workers, amongst our families and amongst members of our community. God, we're so grateful today. You've been so faithful to us. Help us to be more faithful to you. Again, we turn this service over until you bless everybody that's on today. Yes, God, yes, you know what they now. stand in need Thank of, you, God. You know what they're asking you for, God. You know their hearts mm -hmm. and desires. And so, God, we ask that you would answer their prayers today. Thank you for this time to be in service and worship you. Thank you for this time to be in your presence. And God, we just ask you to take care of us all week long. And we'll be so careful to give your name the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior and soon coming King, we pray. And all of God's children say, amen, amen, and amen. Pastor is on, Deborah Ogletree is on, a shepherd's ride ministry. Amen. Is it love? 
that the Lord is so mindful, and He surely cares about your everyday need. And He said, He's never gonna leave you. Will always be there to love. Him totally, it may take a while, but you will learn the love of God is an everlasting love. Oh, the love of God is an I'm telling you he loves you, I'm telling you he's never gonna leave you, I'm telling you he loves you, I'm telling you he thinks the world of you, a love that's true, a love that's refreshing, a love for you, the love Now y'all see why she's my valentine, don't you? God bless you, baby. <laughs> Amen. I love to hear you sing. I could not do this ministry without you. And uh, I love you more and more, even on Valentine's Day. I love you, too. Amen. Happy Valentine's <laughs> you, Day honey. to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Excuse Amen. us, y'all. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, <laughs> Evangelist Brinkley. <laughs> Um, this morning I was up uh, listening to one of my favorite speakers and uh, we started reminiscing on how God put us put us together. But God is such a wonderful God. Yes, God is. is good. God is loving. God is kind. He to, this is love day. This is love day. So today. Let me get myself together here. The scripture is such a, a very familiar scripture, and I believe I've already preached on this scripture, but I got an okay from Pastor Uncle Jesus that says sometimes we just have to go back and go over that same scripture. You'll still find something out of that scripture. So this scripture uh, today is um, John three sixteen for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not perish, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, there was a game show years ago, I'm dating myself, called The Love Connection. Some of you may have heard of it where persons came on to see if they could get a connection with a man or a woman for a date. Further back than that was the dating game. Contestants had to ask a series of questions to, to persons they could not see on the other side of this partition. Then they had to choose a date based upon the answers to their questions. Also at their time, there was a show called The Newlywed Game. And The Newlywed Game was to see how well you knew your mate that you had already married. And so today's message is The Love Connection.
Amen. Preach. The love connection. In the 21st century, we have online dating and we have dating apps. And I did a little research real quick here. And uh, the online dating sites, uh, I remember there was eHarmony. And there is one called uh, Christian Mingle. And there's one for Silver Singles. And uh, there's the other one was Match. Um, that's the online dating. And then there is the dating apps. There is... Have you heard of Bumble? The Bumble is for 26 and 30 to 35 year olds. Then there's Tinder. Um, Christian, there's a Christian app called Upward. And there is one app that says uh, if you want to have children, you want kids, this one says, hey, baby. This was another app that you can get on. There's also an app for black singles called BLK. And so there's one for over 50, Lumen, and after 40, Meeting. And uh, these are some of the things that are being used today. We have The Bachelorette and The Bachelor on television. They're looking for a love connection. Mm -hmm. There isn't a day that we go by that on TV shows and talk shows that they have shows on relationships. Um, Steve Harvey is one, and he wrote some books, and I believe one of his books was made into a movie. Um, Serena Jakes, uh, I have on a little clip it of her um, girl talk panel discussion on my Facebook page. And I saw this and I went back to YouTube to hear the full um, discussion. But because one of the panelists is Michelle McKinney Hammond. And I love Michelle McKinney Hammond. She has several books for women about relationships and getting to know yourself. Along with God and reading books was great help for me when I was entering back into the dating world. It was part of my three-year preparation. My husband passed away in 2003. And so from 2003 to 2006, I was single. Didn't know anything about being single. I had been married 24 years. And so I took that time and told the Lord, I need you to do some preparation on me. I need you to work on me. I need to be healed. Um, I need a, a different mindset. I think I just needed to know exactly who I was in him. And so uh, I had to let the Lord work on me for what he had next in my life. And I said, prepare me. If there is a person, a relationship that you want for me, then you will have to um, make sure that I understand and see who this person is. So today is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Romantics all over the world are finding ways to express their love to that special someone. Preach, preach. Uh, there's candy. You may get some candy. You may get some flowers. Uh, you may have some, some gifts and some cards. You know, Hallmark is just making a uh, uh, killing off of this because they have just the right words for each and every occasion. And for this very occasion, he has, they have the right words. You also will hear the words, those three magical words, I love you. Uh, hopefully you will hear them. So love is in the air today. But I found 
the best way to search for love was in the Bible. It shows, the Bible shows us what real love is all about. Preach. The New Testament shows us God coming down from heaven to teach and to save us. Herein, he commended his love. He is the son of man, by which the Jews always understand to be meant the Messiah. Christ here uh, discourses of the great design of his own coming into the world and the happiness of those that believe in him. Jesus came to seek and to save the children of men from death and recover them to life. This saving here is opposed to condemning. Jesus Christ came to save us by healing us as the children of Israel that were stung with fiery serpents were cured and lived by looking up to the brazen serpent. Now, I had to go back and remember what was going on with this serpent being lifted up, this bra uh, serpent made of brass. And if you go to the book of Numbers, and the scripture is... Numbers, the 21st chapter, 5 through the ninth verse. And it says, And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents, among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. The fiery serpents which God sent into the camp of Israelites were real poisonous snakes which physically bit the people. They are described in the Bible as being fiery due to the poison which penetrates a person's body and makes them literally feel as if their flesh is on fire or is burning, just like with a bee or a wasp sting, except much worse. As I was reading uh, Numbers, the 21st chapter, if you back up to the 11th chapter, this is the first time the children of Israel was complaining and murmuring. And they complained and they murmured. They complained and they murmured because uh, they were wandering in the wilderness. They complained and murmured because uh, God had given them manna. They was tired of manna. They didn't want manna anymore. They uh, they wanted um, they wanted meat, and so God suffered. He gave them meat. He gave them so much meat, he said that it was going to come out of their nostrils. He just gave them overly abundance of meat. But they continue to complain and murmur as you keep on summing through numbers and going into these chapters, you will see that they murmur and complain. And in this chapter, in the 21st chapter, the people, uh, they had to go around this one city. And so um, it was a long trek around the city, and they murmured and complained. <laughs> and 
Uh, they was mad because they didn't have no water at this time again. They didn't have any uh, bread. They didn't like the bread that was given again. They didn't have, they just murmured and complained. Now they murmured and complained against Moses and they murmured and complained to about God. Now you have to Watch out how you talking about God's anointed person and what you're doing to them because God is going to, there's going to be a retribution on you for this. Preach. But the people murmured and complained and they talking about we're going to die here in the wilderness. So the Lord sent these fiery serpents into their midst and they got bitten. And so when we look at for God so loved the world, that means he had so much love for the world, he loved the world dearly. So the God of creation set the remedy of sin for sin back in the garden. When Adam and Eve missed the mark, sin was introduced into a perfect situation. He had to remove them from the garden, but blood was shed, which set in motion down through the generations to bring us back to him. The deadly and de destructive nature of sin, the guilt of sin is like the pain of the biting of the fiery serpent. The power of corruption is like the venom that moves out of that serpent into you. The curses of the law are as fiery serpents. So are all the tokens of divine wrath. The love connection is that God never gave up on us that agape love that he has. He has unconditional love. He kept on looking out for man. The sickness of sin, love was the cure. Preach. The son of man is lifted up as the serpent of the brass, of brass was by Moses. It was a serpent of brass, that brass represented judgment. It was made in the shape of fiery serpent and yet had no poison, no sin, fitly representing Christ as harmless as a serpent of brass. It was lifted up upon a pole and so must the son of man be lifted up. Christ is lifted up. Remember crucifixion? He was lifted up upon the cross. His death is called this and being lifted up. In his exaltation, he was lifted up to the Father's right hand. Yeah. He was lifted up to the cross to be further lifted up to the Preach. crown in the public, publishing and preaching of his everlasting gospel. Being thus lifted up, he was appointed for the cure. He that sent the plague provided the remedy. It was God himself that found the ransom. He who we have offended is our peace. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. The love connection. He gave his only begotten son, the son, the only son, his only son, his unique son. When you love something Preach. or someone, you will give your all, your best. No secondhand stuff here. God gave us his best. He looked upon all my faults and he saw my needs. He saw your needs today. He saw our need of salvation. He saw our need of love. He saw our need of care. He said he would supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory. So today, the love connection saw the best in me. When others don't see the best, God sees the best. Whosoever believeth on him, whosoever trust in him. You remember, we go to the doctor, we get sick, we go to the doctor, we get a diagnosis on our case. He prescribes medicine. We are supposed to take the medicine so that we can get well. Well, 
That's in the natural, in the spiritual. When you are sick, sin with sin, the doctor, God, diagnoses your case by the symptoms. Then he prescribes medicine. Jesus is the medicine for us to take. For us to get well, we must go and get the medicine and take it. The way of applying this remedy is that that is through believing. Amen. We must believe. Yes. We must believe. We must believe. This is what is killing us today, that we don't really believe what God is saying to us. We must pray to God to help our unbelief. Look and live, my brothers and sisters. Look to Jesus now and live. It is recorded in his word. The great encouragement given us by faith to look up to him. It was for this end that he was lifted up that his followers might believe. The offer that is made of salvation by him, his general, whosoever believes without exception, should not perish, may not be lost, shall not die, so that no one who believes in him should be lost. The salvation is complete. They shall not perish. They shall have eternal life. Jesus Christ came to save us by pardoning us. Here is the gospel, the love connection, mm -hmm. the good news, the best that ever came from heaven to earth. Well, in my closing today, here is the love connection. God's love is giving his son for the world. The great gospel mystery revealed God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. Now knows that God loves us. We know he loves us. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible. What tells me so? When he has given his only begotten son for us, in order to redeem and save man, it pleased God to give his son. Yes, yes. He gave him that he gave up all of this. He suffered and he died for us. His enemies could not have taken him if his father had not given him. Herein God has committed his love to the world. God so loved the world. So richly, so richly, so richly. The love connection. Behold the wonder that the great God should love such a worthless world. That the holy God should love such a wicked world. Jesus came to love the Jews and the Gentiles. He loves us today. God loved the world that he sent his son with his fair yeah. proposal that whosoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. The great gospel duty is to believe in Jesus Christ. That's our love connection. We're looking for love everywhere else, but we're, we're neglecting the greatest love of all is Jesus Christ. So today on this Valentine's Day, when you accept Jesus, you have the greatest love connection. The love connection when Christ died on the cross and said, it is finished. God's hand reached down to grab our hand mm -hmm. through Christ. And the disconnect was reconnected in love. The love connection. There is no greater love than this. Then he would lay down his life for his friends. The love connection. Salvation. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We all have sinned. We have come short of the glory of God. But if we believe in Jesus, we will have that love connection. For us that are 
Christians and we mess up down the road. We mess up every day. We say the wrong things. We look at the wrong things. We say, uh, we, we're thinking the wrong things. We do the wrong things. But the scripture says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We want to say today that there is a great love connection and that love connection is Jesus Christ. May God smile upon you today. Amen. Amen. Thank you for such a very powerful message. As we open up the doors of the church, I'm wondering, when we get back into the sanctuary of the church, are you going back the same way? Will you go back and be more faithful and more loving and more giving? Will you go back trusting in God to supply your every need? Will you be a better disciple for Christ? As we open up the doors of the church, think about the love connection. Think about how he loved us, died for us, gave himself for us. What will you give? Will you serve him and live your life for the sake of others? The doors of the church are open. In the times in which we are now living, God wants you to be the church, to be a witness, to stand up and let the world know that you're on the Lord's side. The doors of the church are open. Think about it. How committed will you be? Is open. He will save you. He will save you just now. He will save you. Jesus will save you just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now, only trust Him, only trust Him, just now. Thank you for joining us today. Share this uh, video with somebody who needs to hear about this love connection. If you want to Give to the ministry, so a seed and reap a blessing. You can cash app the ministry by the dollar sign, Parenthood Ministries, the dollar sign, Parenthood Ministries. And uh, we thank all of you who have been sowing seeds into this ministry and that God would richly bless you for your giving. Thank you again, uh, Pastor Cox. We are excited uh, at the Central Missionary Baptist Church this morning. I have the privilege of pastoring such a great group of folk. And this morning we are licensing a young man to preach the gospel who had been running for 31 years. And the second month that I was pastoring Central, he decided that he would accept his call to ministry. So he's going to be preaching from Proverbs the chapter 20, verse 24, and he's going to talk about his steps are ordered by the Lord. Pray for Reverend Carl Turner as he preaches the word of God and answer the call to ministry as we license him as an associate at the Central Missionary Baptist Church. I'm turning back over to my wife. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. We love you to life. God bless you. and We'll see you again uh, Sunday morning at 8 o'clock and then also for prayer for uh, soulful worship, joyful praise on Wednesday at 12 noon. Pastor Cox. Amen, amen. Thank you for being attentive and listening to the word of God. Um, that's the way he gave it to me today. So God good is word. good and he is just so awesome and, and we need to praise and worship him for all what he's doing for us. 
We want to be encouraged to those that are in ministry. Evangelist, evangel, evangelist Angela Brinkley will be on at nine o'clock with words in, of encouragement on Facebook Live. Also, uh, the Shepherd's Rod uh, will be on at eleven o'clock, mm-hmm. and um, that is Pastor Deborah Ogretree. She is the pastor and founder of the she- uh, Shepherd's Rod ministry. So we want to uh, continue to um, encourage her and bless her. We want you to go over to God Loves All Women Facebook group. It is a private group, but you can join. Uh, It is a platform for those women that are in ministry. Those of you that want to pray, you want to uh, read scripture. It's for all women, okay? But I'm just mentioning also is uh, the women that are uh, in ministry that are don't have a platform. Here is a platform for you to come on and preach. Those of you who are lay women, you can um, put up a scripture. You can go on live and pray. Um, we want to uh, be a blessing to each and every woman out there. We don't. We're not uh, discriminating against the men, but women. <laughs> <laughs> we. Need, We need a place to talk, okay? And so this is a place that you can uh, talk, you can uh, journal your progress. If you need prayer, we are there to pray for you. Angela Brinkley, Evangelist Brinkley, is the visionary for this page along with myself and uh, Tanya Stockton and Katrina uh, Walker, who are apostles. So we want you to continue to pray for us as we continue to go forth. And so that is all I have today. Uh, we love you. We pray for you constantly and continually. So at this time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May heaven smile upon you until we see you Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Oh, there's Apostle Tanya Stockton. Hello, hey, hello, hello, hello there. We want to keep her lifted up in prayer. God bless you. God bless you. And it lets you know that uh, the ministry is not just male chauvinistic anymore. Yeah, if the gospel was born in the womb of a woman, so you'd know if it was born in the womb of a woman, a woman can preach the gospel because if it wasn't for women, we wouldn't have a gospel to preach. <laughs> So we will see you on Wednesday at 12 noon. May God bless you. Have a great day. Happy Valentine's Day.